What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Beast. I am the Beast, hanging out today with Peanut Kate, the beauty. Hi. Hi, honey. How are you? Hi. You doing all right today? <laughs> yep. Doing pretty good. All Just right. got done watching episode five. Episode five of The Last of Us. Now, we didn't get a chance to talk about episode four last week, but we did watch it and we did enjoy it. Uh, we had some really busy family business going on, work, family time. And didn't get a chance to upload the video, but we're going to cover both episodes in this condensed episode of Beauty and the Beast today. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened in episode four. A lot of stuff was a little confusing. Episode five really brought it all together and made a lot of sense. It was very, very enjoyable. Kate, give us an idea of what happened in episode four. Um. Okay, so in the beginning, they were siphoning the gas. And then that's when we found out Ellie had the joke book. You know the puns or whatever which was in you know uh the first game and i read that it was in the second one too like it was on her shelf in her room or something now i don't want oh, you guys yeah. to think that she hasn't played part two because i refuse to play it uh i think she's probably more adamantly against playing it than i am I actually uh briefly told you i was going to play it and you you looked at me and said you can play that shit. i was like what you don't want to play part two no. That's unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, they, they do have a lot of little kind of callbacks to the game in this show, which I really appreciate. That joke book is in part one. She's making jokes. Um, she and Joel are out there siphoning gas. He's telling her about how far you could go, um, you know, in the past on one take of gas. You spend all day driving, how much he hated it. Now they're inside their uh, Bill's truck driving across town. He's telling Ellie that he wants to go and find his brother, uh, Tommy, because he always looked out for Tommy. Tommy wanted to change the world, help the world, and ended up messing around with the Fireflies and ended up kind of becoming, um, you know, excommunicated from that group and ended up on his own out in the world. And Joel hasn't heard from him in a while. He's talking about going out and finding him. And uh, during this period of time, you see another call back to the game where Ellie's in the back seat. She pulls out the nudie magazine that Bill had, and she says the, the, the phrase... Mm -hmm. How do you even walk with that thing? She, I mean, they yeah. really nailed it. She threw the, the magazine out of the car the exact same way as the game. And those kind of things I really appreciate because to me, those moments um, were the bonding moments of Ellie and Joel uh, in the game. And, and the fact that they're trying to re reproduce that and replicate it means a lot to me. Um, they did divert quite a bit in this episode. Not quite as much as they did in episode five. Uh, but... I guess you really need to flesh out this stuff if you're going to tell a TV show. You're not playing a video game, so you got to add um, things, subtract things. And for the most part, I think it worked. They ended up way out in the woods. They got off of the expressway, right? And and they drove down into the woods uh, beyond. Past, past all the buffalo. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a question I have. There's a scene in episode four where they drive past like a a school of, of grazing buffalo, and they're all fenced in like the ones you see on off of Highway 85 somewhere. And they're all just chilling. And I'm like, wait a minute, aren't hungry people in this world? Isn't this 20 years after, uh, you know, the outbreak? How are they still caged up in there? And how are they not dead? It just blew my mind. These must be super, super buffalo. But yeah, they end up driving and going into the woods and eating some 20-year-old ravioli, right? Yeah, and, and and pulling out some sleeping bags from Bills, and uh, you know, hanging out in the middle of the night and uh, sleeping, and then the next morning they get back inside the truck, and they're they're headed toward, I guess, where he thinks his brother Tommy is, and uh, the the magic. I huh? I hated the way Ellie ate in that scene. Oh yeah, ate her food, and the way she reacted to coffee. Oh yeah, it it upset me so much. <laughs> Made you want to drink some coffee, huh? Uh, yeah, she's um. Bella Ramsey is not the best. Um, there are some times where you really feel like, hey, that's Ellie would have said that. And other times you're like, that's totally not Ellie. I think episode yeah. five, she did a better job, but she's more obnoxious than Ellie was. And um, yeah, she ate like there was an invisible man with a, a knife in the middle of her back saying, eat, eat, eat. You know, it was like she wasn't enjoying it. She was just eating it with her teeth almost. It was yeah. very, very weird. But a really cool part of the show that mirrored the game almost perfectly was when they got into town and the guy came walking up and said hey I need some help can you please help me in the game Ellie looks over at Joel like can we help him and Joel was like in the game he's like he's not even hurt and just drove forward and then all these people came out 
and, and messed up their truck and then they, they crashed into the building. It almost happened exactly like that in the show, which yeah. I really love. The guy's up on top uh, of like one of the uh, landings up there on the side of the building, throws a big box off it, smashes through the window. Joel diverts and, and swerves the truck and they go flying into this building. They jump out and they have a gunfight. It's really, really cool. Uh, and, and seeing Joel uh, handle these guys is very reminiscent of the game for me. Uh, Ellie came and saw Joel. He finally had the last guy cornered, and Joel decides he's going to go ahead and kill him so he doesn't run back and tell whoever he's with. And Joel wipes him out with a gun. He shiv- I mean, with a knife. He shivs him and, and kills him that way. And that's when we meet the most dangerous and terrifying sergeant at arms I've ever seen, Kathleen. This is the most unbelievable character you'll ever see uh, leading a battalion of uh, Black Hawk type Marines you will ever see. It's a little woman who you can see working in a library, running a group of hardened Marine type men. And I was like, I was really taken aback initially. I was like, who is this chick, firstly? And why is she in charge? Are there no real men here? It just really struck me as strange. But they introduce Kathleen, and she's interrogating someone, an older guy, and she's asking him about Henry. Of course, we know who Henry and Sam are in the game. And and they really did craft a whole story around Henry, and they added some new characters like this woman, Kathleen. And initially, I was really, you know, perturbed by Kathleen, but uh, by the end of episode five, I appreciated what they'd done, and it all made a lot of sense, and I thought it was really, really cool, but... Kathleen's looking for Henry. We, we don't know why yet. She's interrogating this old guy. He says he doesn't know where Henry is, and she ends up killing him anyway. He's her doctor. So these people all yeah. work together with Kathleen in this small town, this small community. And uh, these people are obviously uh, not working as closely with their community as they'd like. They're called... Um, are they conspirators? What are they called? Uh, collaborators. Collaborators. So they're... Um, they're working with it's called Fedra. Mm-hmm. So Fedra is like um, a military or a, a militia that's out there uh, trying to take over small towns and communities and, and with an iron fist. And so, uh, but I think I think they all have like the good supplies and stuff too. Yeah, so Fedra, like they have all the yeah. medicine, food, all that stuff. So there are people who are working in Kathleen's community who are supposed to be against Fedra, who for whatever reason started collaborating with them. And ultimately, that's what Henry had done, and that's why he got in so much trouble. Uh, and then it shows um, Ellie and Joel going into um, these buildings and hiding, right? And, and, and it shows a scene where Kathleen and some of her military guys go into this building, and you can see the floor is like bubbling from something underneath, and you can tell yeah. it's infected down there. They're trying to come up through the floor, and uh, he's like, you may take care of this. And she's like, we'll take care of it later. I'm like, who in the hell would say that? Uh, But they decide to just cordon off the building and take care of it later like some weirdos, uh, which I don't really understand at all. But the next scene shows Ellie and Joel, I guess what, going up these stairs, like a stairwell, a really tall building. And um, they get up there and I guess they're trying to plan their escape from this city because now Kathleen's looking for them. Kathleen's looking for Henry, and they're trying to kill these people uh, on site because Joel and Ellie killed three of her best guys. So she's very, very upset about that. And that's how the episode uh, ends up going off. The last scene of the, that episode four shows Ellie. I mean, Joel being woke, awoken by Ellie. Ellie has her hands up, and then there's Henry with his gun to Ellie's head, and the little boy Sam is pointing his gun. At Joel's head, and that's how it goes. Yep. So that's how episode four went. Um, how do you? What did you think about the episode? Was it cool to you? Was it not very memorable? Um, yeah, it's not very memorable. Um, I didn't, I didn't hate it, but I didn't. It wasn't definitely not the best. Yeah. Um, I did like some of the scenes, you know, the shootout and the whole Joel and Ellie coming into town. That was really good. Um, I don't really care about Kathleen or like anything but but I liked knowing the story you know was she of, believable to you as um this militia leader no because nah, she she also seemed like she was the only girl like there was very few women 
This is the work of Neil Druckmann. There's nothing worse than a male feminist. Let me just say that. Anyway, um,